Hey everybody, Mr. J here. Today we are going to be going through week four, A and P two, which is going to primarily be the heart, its anatomy, as well as its physiology, so the function. Okay, so we're mostly going to be talking about the anatomy and how blood is flowing in and out and going every which way, uh, but we're also going to briefly talk about the cardiac potential, the electrochemical impulses that are sent via the pacemaker cells. So we'll talk about that briefly and also highlight it next week. So let's start with my basic drawing of the heart. It's very, very drawn to scale. Um, my heart is more like this. It's a little larger, uh, whereas this is most other people. I'm just kidding. But this is the way I like to draw it because it simplifies things. When we look at the heart, it looks very strange. It doesn't really look like a heart. So I like to draw it like a heart to kind of simplify it. So first off, the left side of the heart is as if you are looking at the person, right? So the person's facing you. And their left atria and left ventricles will be on this side, whereas their right atria and right ventricles will be on this side. Okay? Let's talk about the path of blood. In the right atria, it's receiving venous blood from the body. It's blue because it has low oxygen. Okay? So it just delivered oxygen to the body, and now it's going back to the heart through the right atria. And eventually it's going to go to the right ventricle and go to the lungs to pick up more oxygen and to dump off carbon dioxide. Whereas on the other side, this blood is coming from the lungs, okay? So once it gets to the lungs, goes to the lungs, gets oxygen, comes back from the lungs to the left atria, which will pump to the left ventricle and then pump to the body to feed the body's tissues, right? Now, this is a very coordinated process. We'll talk about that briefly in a second. But both atria are going to contract at the exact same time, pushing blood into the ventricles which are larger, by the way, and then they are going to pump very strongly either to the lungs or to the body in synchrony, right? So it's like boom, 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 okay? Now let's talk a little bit about the layers of the heart. So if we were to like cut the heart open and look at the layers of the heart, we'd see several distinct layers, okay? We divide these into kind of three main parts, and that's going to be the epicardium, okay? And there's three very thin layers to that. There's going to be the myocardium, the thick muscular layer. So myo means muscle, cardium means heart. So heart muscle is going to be really dense and strong. This is where you'd find your cardiac uh, myocytes. And then we're also going to have the endocardium, very thin. And it's basically the inner side of the heart. There you go, the light kind of fixed. So the endocardium is on the inside. It's open to the, uh, it's basically touching the hollow opening of the heart where the blood will be. So let's talk about the epicardium, which is going to be these three very thin layers. They are not drawn to scale in here. The most, let's start inside. So we got endocardium, myocardium, and then right uh, superficial to the myocardium will be the visceral pericardium. Visceral meaning organ, it's touching the actual organ itself. And then that's going to be uh, right next to, just, super, uh, just uh, deep to the parietal pericardium. Both of these, so parietal is on the outside, visceral is on the inside, and this is a part of the serous membrane. We know serous membrane secretes this uh, lubricating fluid, so as the heart is pumping, it's basically rubbing against a frictionless surface because of that serous fluid. Okay, so very important. So both of those linings of the heart are serous membranes, and once again, this is part of the epicardium. The last layer of the epicardium is incredibly important. It is the fibrous pericardium, the furthest outside part of the heart. It's fibrous. It, can, it has some elasticity to it, but it also has some tension. So if it's stretched, it wants to come back. So as the heart contracts, it's going to basically pump blood, right? So it's going to pump, it's going to change shape and do this all the time. The fibrous pericardium prevents it from over distending or from under distending. So it basically keeps it in this nice little pocket where it's not moving too big, and not getting too small as well. So that's a really important layer of the heart. Okay, so now I wanna talk a little bit about the pathway of blood, and I will give these to you in a lecture on Tuesday, I think it is. But I just wanna show you the path of blood, and this is also online. So let's walk through it. We've got our right atrium, right? This is blood coming from the body. Hopefully, you've <laughs> hopefully you said that before me. It's going to the right atrium. It's going to pump blood. This is on the right side. It's going to pump blood through the tricuspid valve. Ri, tri, remember that, right tri. 
pumps blood through the tricuspid valve, which are connected by these chordate tendinae to basically keep that valve secure. Okay, it's gonna to go to the right ventricle, and it's going to pump blood through the, it's going to the lung, so it's going to be pulmonary, semilunar. This is going to be your semilunar valve. The way I remember that is it's pumping it to the moon, pumping it out and up, right? So pumping it through the pulmonary semilunar, semilunar which will go to the pulmonary arteries. Arteries are away from the heart. Okay, so those will go to the lungs, away from your heart, pulmonary arteries. Two sides because it has to go to two lungs. And the reason the right atria is actually smaller is because it only has to pump to the lungs. It's super close by, so it doesn't have to be as uh, large and thick. So look at the myocardium here, pretty thin. The left ventricle is going to be very thick and strong. So once it goes through the pulmonary circulation, gets to the lungs, it's bringing back oxygenated blood, right? So it's going to be red usually, and it's going to bring it back through the pulmonary lung vein, right? Bringing it back to the heart. Veins means back towards the heart. So it's bringing it back through the pulmonary veins on both sides, and it's going to go to the left atria. The left atria will contract, and blood will flow through the bicuspid valve, which is called the mitral valve. It's going to pump it through that valve, once again connected by chordae tendinae to hold that valve in place. Go to the left ventricle, super thick and strong, because it's got to pump it to the body. This is oxygenated blood pumping to the body. When that pumps, okay, it'll be very strong, and it'll pump it through the aortic semilunar. This is going to go to the aorta. You see this very large uh, artery. It's uh, actually the size of a fire hose, pretty darn big. So it's pumping it through the, uh, sorry, the aortic semilunar valve, and once again, pumping it to the moon, but into the aortic uh, semilunar. Okay, so it pumps it through there, and then these uh, superior arteries are gonna go up towards the head, so the heart's gonna pump up to the head, and then the descending aorta will pump the body basically lower, okay? So that is the route of the heart in all its valves, and I will give you this uh, so it can kind of help you out. Last thing, uh, we watched a video that I linked. I believe it is called Cardiac Pacemaker Potential on YouTube. I posted it. It's a great, great, great video about how uh, the heart maintains a constant pace. Um, and I'm just going to really briefly walk through that. So a fascinating thing about the heart is it has its own potential to conduct action potentials. When we talk about action potentials, it's basically a signal being sent down a neuron and it's going to tell the body to do something. So as I'm moving my muscles, action potentials are being sent down my motor units, my neurons to the muscles, releasing acetylcholine from that action potential, and then I can contract my muscles, okay? With the heart, it does it by itself. It conducts these action potentials by itself. And it happens in both of these nodes, but primarily the cytoatrial node. So this cytoatrial node, will have these things called funny channels. These are, well, let's say funny channels, and these are in the membranes of their cells, and it's going to allow sodium, positively charged ions, to slowly flow in. So sodium flows in slowly, and once it flows in, that, uh, usually the uh, pacemaker uh, inside the membrane, it's a negative charge usually. Uh, I can't remember if it's negative 90 or negative 70, but it's very low inside the cell. So if sodium, a positive ion, is flowing into the cell, it's going to make the cell more positive, which will make it reach what's called the threshold potential. Once that threshold potential is reached, a bunch of other uh, channels will basically open up, so uh, voltage-gated ion channels will open up, bringing in a bunch of positive ions, and that is when the action potential will be set, okay? The reason it can do it itself, like conducting its own action potential itself, is because these sodium ions are flowing in slowly, basically polarizing the membrane slowly, and then it reaches threshold, and then boom, sends action potential, okay? So that's really important. I'll talk about it more next week. But when that reaches an action potential, the action potential will be sent in a few different directions. First off, it'll be sent basically throughout this atria. So this would be the right atria. And it will also shoot over and depolarize the cardiac myocytes in the left atria. Okay, why is this important? Since it's shooting these action potentials only to the atria first, the atria will contract once all those myocytes are uh, depolarized, 
or yeah, depolarize, all of them will contract in synchrony. Okay, so action potentials are sent, all these to the muscles, and then the atria contract. While those contract, the sinoatrial node's action potential will eventually reach the atrioventricular node, the AV node, which will stimulate it to send action potentials down the, this is called the node of his. Okay, so it's kind of like a little, or a bundle of his. His, his, I don't know, it's HIS. And it reaches right here, and it goes through this bundle, and these are called the Purkinje fibers. So these will basically send action potentials down these Purkinje fibers all the way throughout both the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And what's super important about this conducting pathway is that the atria will contract, and as soon as those atria contract, that is when the AV node will shoot down action potentials down the Purkinje fibers, which will depolarize the ventricular myocytes, so the ventricle muscle cells, and then they will contract also in synchrony. So think about it. There are a lot of issues that could go wrong with this electrical stimulation, right? So what if the SA node basically stopped conducting? Okay, well then we wouldn't have these action potentials being sent down to the atria, so the AV node would have to basically starve all of these action potentials, and you can have some issues with your heart rate. Well, what if one of these Purkinje fibers gets severed or something? Oh, that'd be bad, because now the right ventricles aren't gonna get those action potentials as strong, so the left ventricle will, but the right ventricle will kind of be a little weak, right? So there's a lot of issues that can go wrong inside of this uh, mechanism, and so we're gonna talk about that a little bit next week. Uh, but I just wanted to overview it very quickly. Um, I'm still debating if I want you guys to learn the different channels, uh, the ion channels that are actually in the pacemaker cells versus the myocytes. Um, so we'll probably watch that video once again on Tuesday just to review it, um, and then we will go from there. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, we also had a test this week, so a little shorter video today. Um, but this is a great overview of both the anatomy and a little bit of the electrical, electrical physiology of the heart. So. Take care.